Hey there, and welcome back to the Virtual Cafe for another coffee combo about business finances. I'm your host, Kerry Zarb, and I am joined by Kim White. We invite you to join us at our table with your favourite brew. Let's pull up our chairs and get into today's episode. Come on, let's go. It's coffee time. Hey, Kim. Hey, Kerry. What are we going to talk about today? Oh my goodness, Carrie! I know you have a good topic for today. I might. I might have a, a very distracting one that could resemble a unicorn. <laughs> because... Not me, Carrie. Well, and, and today's really... We want to have a, a bit of a conversation with a question mark of does your business money resemble a unicorn? And, and can I... Can I kind of take the reins here for a bit, Kim, and explain my thinking? Please, Carrie. So I know for a fact a lot of people feel like money comes in, money goes out, and money comes in, and money goes out. And sometimes it can actually make us feel like, well, what am I doing? Like, why why do I bother? And what's going on here? And how come it flies in and it flies out? And Kerry likes flying unicorns. So that's kind of where the thinking's coming from, Kim. I don't even know if I'm on track myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carrie, would you give us a definition so we understand for sure? Because well, I want to make sure I'm tracking in this conversation. What, what am I defining, Kim? So when you say money comes in and goes out and it's like a unicorn, sometimes unicorns are a good thing and sometimes unicorns are a bad thing. So would you explain in this conversation what that means? Well, I guess where I'm coming from is not so much in the good area of unicorns being magical and amazing, more in the sense of, oh, it just moves so fast, you know, like it's coming in one door, going out the next, and and what? What happened? What actually happened? And sometimes I feel like we either don't have margins in our business we don't know what those margins are are we profitable and really are we making as much money as we're spending therefore it just creates that flowing motion of the money comes in the money goes out and there's nothing left or you know i just did these huge weeks of work and what have i got to show for it So I fear there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that if they're not feeling this now, they've felt it before. And I I want to talk about it out loud. I actually want to put all the cards on the table and say it how it is for anyone that might be struggling so that they can start to tap into why, why this might be happening in their business finances and what's creating that feeling of why should I bother? Why do I get out of bed in the morning? What am I turning up for and what's the point? So can I make a confession, Carrie? Sure. When I first started doing um, business, I think whenever money was coming in, I was so happy because I was able to let it go out. Like I was able to spend it. And because I think in the beginning when you start a business, you don't have enough coming in to go out. Like, it feels like you're feeding the monster. You're the one, you know, supplying from savings or doing things to to keep the business afloat in the very beginning. And then I think I moved over into the, I've got money coming in and going out, and wowie, that was fast. Like, you know, it, it just it just was swirling around me. I do think that that was a good thing because at least I had the money to pay the things I needed to pay. And then I think you cross over to this place of you have money coming in and you're so excited you have money like maybe a few dollars even left over from the bills or the expenses that now all of a sudden you're paying. Like you're you're not leaving any money sitting there because I have a hundred dollars I'm going to spend it. I'm in a, it's burning a hole in my pocket. And I I think that those are stages we go through as entrepreneurs, especially if we weren't born with money and we were never taught how to use money because I wasn't. I think those are some of the stages we go into, but I also think the next stage is learning to have money that sits there. 
That's the hard part, Kim. That's a that's a really tough spot to be in, particularly when our business has grown and we've reached that point where there is a surplus. There's a surplus of funds sitting there and we have to get over that burn a hole in your pocket kind of motion. Sometimes we need to experience that for a little bit to learn from it. And, and I've been there and done that, trust me, guilty party number one. And when we hit that point of having the surplus, I don't know about what happens in the States exactly, Kim, but here there's like an 18 month cycle of business where you don't really have much to do with the tax man until you hit 18 months. So you've done your first, you know, depending on when you started your business, you've done those, those first few months of trading. Once you've done a full financial year and some, and you hit that tax season, then the ATO goes, now we know you, hello. And sometimes when a business starts, it takes longer than that to build the momentum. Businesses can start as a side hustle and actually operate for many years before they gain that extra momentum and hit that surplus of funds for the tax man to even, you know, like blip on their radar, other businesses get there really quickly. And it can be a bit of a shock in that 18 month cycle when your business, if you've quit your day job, you've started your business and you're serious and you're starting to, you know, make targets and goals to achieve and you've got to replace your revenue and all those moving parts and you're successful in that 18 month period, then along comes the tax man and he wants a piece of the pie as well. And the biggest trap I see, Kim, is depending on that cycle, whether it's a few years from the side hustle or the 18 months of I mean business and I'm going to get in there and give it a go, we forget to put away for the tax man. Then, if we're, if we're just starting to hit surplus, it's this double whammy effect of, oh, I'm okay, now I can breathe, I can pay my bills, the money's flowing in, cash flow's good, I've got some, got some funds in the bank, along comes tax man, and you go, well, crap, what just happened? <laughs> I think it's really important though, Gary, to, to recognize that this is pretty normal. Oh, yeah. I think everybody that hits that wall does not feel like that's normal. Absolutely. I've had discussions here with new clients, Kim, that have started businesses, the first thing I say to them, you are currently in the sweet spot. You are in the perfect opportunity. You've got 18 months. You've got 18 months to build this business. Put away your tax. Put away your tax now. Because guess what? When the tax man comes around and you hit the radar and you do your first full return, if you mean business, and I'm, I'm talking about serious go-getters that want their business to succeed. So they're in that 18 month to two year basket of a turnaround. I'm telling them straight up to put the tax money away. You don't need it yet, but guess what? You'll thank me later. You'll thank yourself later for putting that money aside because it ain't gonna hurt. It's, it's not actually, you've already got the funds plus some because if you start nice and early if you're serious about your business and you're going to make money from the get-go you have that opportunity to create that tax buffer for yourself so that you don't fall into the trap that i did and so many other people have well in carry here in the states it it's an annual thing like there's not that buffer of 18 months it's it's every year so if you start in the middle, if you start in the middle of a year, you still have that year that you have to address. So like, we don't really have a rollover in the same way, I guess. So we want to make sure we say that too, that we're not, um, we're not advising anybody. You might want to do your little disclaimer, Carrie, because I just want to make sure everybody knows we're here to share experiences. We're here to share what we know we are not experts at this. No, and Kim, I purposely put the disclaimer at the end of the show and in the show notes to make sure that people understand exactly what they're going to get out of this podcast. I agree with you, Kim, and it's just 
fully know that this is exactly what we've gone through and seen others go through. So we're just here chewing the fat with everyone to put it all out there to help you prepare for what's coming your way in your business finances, but certainly not tax accountants, not here to lay out the advice cards. You do need to speak to your own professional in your space and get the advice that you need. So thank you, Kim, for mentioning that. We're here having coffee and talking money, Gary. That's what we're here for. (laughs) We're having a date at the virtual cafe and just chilling and and chatting and and having a great time. But Kim, I want to get back on topic because I kind of took, I took us on a serious route. I confess it was all my fault. See, did you see the unicorn? Did you see what happened? (laughs) It was a serious unicorn that time. Uh, Kim, I want to talk about the unicorn in our business finances in more regards because there's multiples of them and sometimes they can catch us off guard in many different ways. So Kim, what comes to mind when you think about a unicorn in your business finances on the not so fun side? Well, Terry, I'm not sure I'm going to give a good example. Um, but I think immediately of that I did something different than what I should have done for my business's sake. So I, I got off track. That's what I think about whenever I think about a unicorn is like you said, money coming in, money going out, but I'm putting money out in a different direction than my business needs me to. That's a good example, Kim, and I think that can happen to a lot of us as well because Unicorn is literally going to take us on a different path, which sometimes we might actually get swayed down a different direction than where we want to go, should go, and and essentially our business needs us to go. And therefore, sometimes we can actually be spending money that either we can't afford or money that was intended for something else. And that can actually stitch us up in our business finances because sometimes that can go on for a while. Like I've seen it happen and even been victim to it as well for a good six or 12 months, easily. And next minute you're like, hang on a minute. Oh, damn, that wasn't supposed to, that wasn't part of the plan. And sometimes we don't even have a plan. Sometimes we don't have a plan written down so much as to what we should have done, but we know we kind of stuffed up a little bit and we know that we we got a little bit sidetracked and distracted and that unicorn took us on a lovely adventure <laughs> and next minute we're like paying for it a little bit too, yeah? So Carrie, you have something you call the control center. I do. And it's the tool that you made for people who don't necessarily have a platform to rely on. And I kind of giggle when you're talking about this because I think the control center helps us (laughs) wave away the unicorns. It helps us pay attention and not be distracted by the things that look like the because a unicorn looks good. Yeah. Like a unicorn looks like something we want to go do, but the control center that you've set up helps us actually stay on track because we're paying attention. Yeah, and Kim, to that point, and, and I think I've spoken about this in a previous episode or in other conversations for sure, it, the control center helps you assign jobs to your money so that you stay on track because Every dollar should be doing something, no matter how big or how small. Every single dollar, every 50 cents. Oh, hang on, Kim, do you have 50 cents in the US? No, we do, Gary. Is it called 50 cents? Well, 50 cents is like two quarters or a half a dollar or... Ah. like We we really probably should stick to dollars. Okay, let's... let's, (laughs) There goes another unicorn. Obviously, maybe maybe we should turn that into a future episode, Kim. But for the moment, we'll park that on the shelf. We'll put that unicorn away. But 
that's the purpose of the control centre and there's a there's a big nasty word out there that people use in finances and it starts with B Kim. Do you want to say it? Because I might say something else. Oh, it's the budget, Carrie. If you say budget in most circles, everybody cringes and tries to find a way out of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk about a good way to empty a room. Oh, let's talk about budgets. Where did everybody go? Oh, everybody left. What happened? Oh, that is spot on, Gary. <laughs> well, my budget is my control centre because the budget was just too ugly and it had such a negative reputation in the world. So the control centre is how you control your money and assign every single bean a job and make sure that you can stay on track and avoid the unicorns because although they sound great and they're pretty and I really love unicorns personally, however, when it comes to business finances, we've got to stay on track. We've got to stick to the plan and make sure that we're controlling all of them as much as we possibly can. So can I make a confession about the B word, Kerry? Sure. When... When budgeting used to come up, when that word would come up, I immediately would have this, I think, rebellious attitude come up inside of me of don't tell me what to do. Yeah. Like, I think that that was the thing that was confusing to me, not growing up with budgets, not understanding them, was I felt like that was something trying to control me. I didn't recognize it first and it took a very, um, I don't even want to confess how long of time that it took to make me understand it's actually giving me control to control my money. It's not about controlling me, it's about me taking control. So there is a shift that a lot of us have to do when it comes to budgeting or when it comes to even having this conversation. When you say control center, I feel like I get the picture of, you know, I'm getting into the seat, I'm strapping up, I'm I'm like ready to go and I have the gears and I have the steering wheel or I have the, you know, whatever the control is, I'm pushing the button. When you say budget, I immediately think somebody's got me in handcuffs somewhere. <laughs> And so I think it's important to recognize how it feels whenever we're talking about this. If you are like me and budgeting is a torturous seeming thing, move over to Carrie's way of doing it because the control center is pretty sexy, Carrie. And simple, Kim. Let's just keep it simple, always. But I'll confess, Kim, I did not have a budget when I first started working. I didn't have a budget when I moved into my 20s. I was not good with money. I really wasn't. I never saved. I never saved a cent because I had no budget. I had no system or method because I think I felt like you, Kim, where, well, it's my money. I worked for it, so I'll do what I want. It's Exactly. <laughs> and if that means I'm going shopping, I am going shopping. Don't you worry about that. So I, th I think we all have a little kind of, mm, with the B word, a little bit and, and completely understandable. And Kim, I, this has been another great conversation in the virtual cafe. Any final thoughts? Well, I think my final thought is get with Carrie and get her control center because that makes all the difference in keeping the unicorns out of the finances in your business. Thank you, Kim, and thank you for joining me in the virtual cafe. We will see you next week. Thank you, Carrie. I'll see you then. Bye. Thanks for joining us in the virtual cafe. You can follow the show to be notified of future episodes. And if you're enjoying this podcast, we encourage you to leave a rating or personal review. Until next time, happy biz beans to you. No beans were harmed during the production of this podcast. Information contained in this podcast should be taken as general advice only and your personal circumstances have not been taken into account. It is recommended that you seek financial advice from a professional who is licensed to do so. If you choose to act upon the general advice shared, you do so at your own risk.